Hi, I'm Kira. Welcome back to the channel. I have a really juicy, relaxing yin class for you today. I'm so glad you're here. So at the time that I'm recording this, the winter solstice is next week and winter is a coming. And I always feel this time of year is very interesting because in the natural world, it's a time for slowing down, going inward, conserving our resources. But as human beings in society, this time of year is sometimes the most hectic of the entire calendar year. And it becomes the opposite of that natural nudge to slow down and in fact, pressure to speed up, to expend our resources, really, you know, sort of give more energy than we have a lot of the time. So I hope that this practice will help to rejuvenate you. You'll need a couple of props for today. You'll need a bolster or a nice firm pillow from your bed or your couch could do as well. And you might wanna have a blanket and a block as well. I'll see you on the mat. pose. So take your, your equipment. This is going to be very supportive for you throughout this practice. So you may choose to take child's pose without any support, but when I practice yin, I like to support my chest and abdomen with a bolster in child's pose. So we're here for five minutes. I'm minding the clock. So take your time. Get yourself settled here. You might wish to um, bring your cheek to one side or have the forehead down. So if you bring a cheek to one side, I'll let you know when we're about halfway through so you can switch. All right, so settling into your child's pose, making any adjustments you need so you can start to be more still there. Take a sweet inhale through the nose. Smooth exhale through the nose. And as you breathe, notice the points of contact with your body and the props or the equipment around you. Whenever we're in a forward fold like child's pose, it's a great opportunity to feel the breath in the back. So as you breathe, try to Gently inflate lower back with breath. Expanding breath into back ribs. And breathing into the upper back. Just letting each inhale and exhale begin to create space and ease in the body. You might even imagine your lungs inside your rib cage expanding on the inhalation, contracting on the exhalation. So when things speed up during this time of year in our calendars, just in society, sometimes it's very difficult to get the mind and the body on the same page and the breath is always your bridge back to more calm, more presence, more peace. Bring your awareness now to the space between your eyebrows, the mind space, the yogis call this the chittakash. And just notice the mood of your mind, any thoughts that are bubbling up. Yin can be a very meditative practice where we're hanging out with our mind more still than usual. So without any judgment, just note what's there. We're about halfway through the hold, so if you could turn the other cheek to get an even stretch through your neck. And because Yin invites us to drop into this slower mode, sometimes it takes a little while for the mind to catch up, to also settle, slow down. So if you find your mind is very active, 
something I love to use in my yin practice is called a mantra. So mantra translates to mind tool. And the one I'll offer you for today is so simple. As you inhale, you mentally repeat the word let. As you exhale, mentally repeat go. Inhale, let. Exhale, go. One more minute here. Maybe using mantra or just being silent, still with yourself, watching the mind. And that's five minutes in your first Ian hold. Nice work. So ever so slowly, you're gonna come forward onto hands and knees, tabletop, and we'll move into some slow cats and cows. As you inhale, belly drops, gaze up for cow pose. Exhale, spine rounds, cat pose. Cat and cow on your own. So if you're not familiar with yin, it comes from ancient China, Taoist yoga, and the philosophy of yin and yang, so that everything has an opposite. The yin has a yang, and if the yin is our long holds, our quiet, still postures, we need to bring in a bit of yang to balance that, some movement, some action. So we'll always be peppering a little yang into our yin. Take any movement that feels intuitive to you here. Maybe you circle your hips a little bit. As long as you keep breathing, you are in the zone. And then meet me in a seat with your legs extended in front of you. We'll come into our second yin hold called caterpillar. We'll be in this guy for four minutes, we'll ease in on our hold. So setting up the posture, if you feel like you've got tight hips or a tight lower back or maybe some sciatica, you might wanna sit up on a blanket, Just sitting on the edge of the blanket. And everyone, you wanna feel here like your pelvis is tilting forward slightly, so you're not beginning from a rounded lower back, you're sitting up nice and tall. And then from there, you might take your bolster and maybe your block as well. And then you're gonna fold forward over your legs. Now, if hamstrings are tight, you could bend the knees a little. You might put a towel underneath, a rolled towel. The goal is to arrive in a comfortable position where you feel supported in a version of the shape that you can hold for four minutes. So that first minute is all about just arriving, making any adjustments that you need so that you can allow the body to be still. And in yin, we're always looking for that first sensation of stretch. So if what you feel is a scale of one to 10, you wanna hang out around a five or a six, you don't wanna be at your maximum. So over the next couple of breaths, moving toward stillness. Stillness is one of our pillars in our yin practice. So it's not that you can't move at all. If you ever feel, you know, that something is not right in the posture, if there's pain, you always want to adjust, you want to move. Or if you feel like your body is responding and you need to shift a little bit to go deeper into the shape, Movement is great there too. But ultimately, yin asks us to be still so that we can move into that more internal place where the shift happens inside. You're halfway through the hold already. Notice your breath. Notice 
Notice where you feel the breath the most and then easefully deepen it. And you might find as you hold the posture that you need less support. Maybe a block comes out of your support structure. It's tapping into your intuition of what's right. You know, one more minute in the posture. As we move into the winter season, yin feels very appropriate in that it sort of mirrors the, the dormant state that a lot of animals, a lot of plants take for the winter. Kind of shutting down any unnecessary action or movement so that a shift can happen inside. And observing those subtle passive internal shifts, that's really the, the yin zone. About 30 more seconds here. Just breathing in the pose, being with yourself, observing your experience. And that's four minutes. Very nice. So slowly, gently, you know, unwind your spine. You can set your equipment off to the side. And bend your knees, bring your feet to the floor. We'll come into reverse tabletop as a counter pose. Hands behind you, fingers spilling off the mat on either side. You'll squeeze your seat to lift the hips any amount and rock forward and back, pressing your chest and your hips up. More active pose. And then lower the hips down. And swing your legs behind you. We're headed into Sphinx pose, our first back bend. So you'll come onto your forearms and you want to have your block nearby for this posture. So come onto your forearms, roll the shoulders down the back, pull the heart through. So we're setting up this sphinx in a yang sort of way, a little more active approach, stronger approach. And I want you to take everything you've got going on here and then just soften it. So let the muscles that line your spine start to relax pelvis get heavy. If this feels like a bit too much of a back bend, you might walk your elbows forward a little bit, lessen the curve in your spine. If you're craving a deeper back bend, you might straighten your arms. This is called seal pose. So we're here in sphinx or seal for three minutes now. If you're in sphinx, you might take your block, place it on its highest setting, and just rest your forehead down. Some gentle pressure between the eyes near that third eye point. Just scanning the body here as you settle in, feeling the muscles of the back start to relax, give in to gravity, relaxing the glutes. Sometimes the glutes get a bit gripped in a back bend, so buttocks relaxed, back of the thighs, calves, soles of the feet, 
starting to get heavier, just giving into gravity. You're halfway through the hold. So it's a bit more active, the shape. So look for those places where you can let go another layer. Holding stable in your pose, but letting go of any tension, control, or holding in the body. Last minute here, maybe you bring back in that mantra. Inhale, let. Exhale, go. Nice work, yogis. That's three minutes. From here, we'll just lower down onto our bellies and come into a cactus shape with the arms. So cactus or goalpost arms and bring one cheek to the mat. Just laying down with an ear to the ground. You stay right there. I'm just coming up so I can talk you through it. And just feel that gentle stretch in the side of your neck. Gentle stretch from right ear to right shoulder. And then slowly, gently turn the other cheek. Feeling a stretch from left ear to left shoulder. Creating space in the neck. And with an ear to the ground, notice everywhere you're being supported, held up by the ground. And it's as if you could draw energy up from the earth to recharge your system. Slowly, gently. Hands will slide back down by the ribs so that you can press yourself up back to a seat. And from here, we'll come into butterfly pose. So once again, since this is a forward fold, you may wish to use your uh, folded blanket or towel to sit on so you feel that slight forward tilt of the pelvis. And again, let's approach this in a more yang fashion. So pull the heels in toward the groin, press the knees down, puff up the chest, feel the yang quality of this. And then start to slide the heels away from the groin. And today let's make a pretty wide diamond shape here. From here, you'll fold forward. And then you might bring your props back into the situation. You become a a little architect in yin, building these structures of support for yourself. And we'll be in this hold for five minutes. So knowing that, set yourself up. Again, remember, you're not looking to feel the most extreme sensation of stretch, rather five or six, a place you can breathe with ease. Allow the mind to settle because the body is not too stressed out by the posture. And it's a difficult balance, that search for the sweet spot where we're feeling enough but not feeling too much.
As you rest in the posture, you can keep your mind engaged in the present just by observing where you feel this. Observing sensations gives the mind something to do. It's, it's almost a mantra in a way, a mind tool. Butterfly is such a gentle stretch for the connective tissue around the pelvis, stretching the lower back here, the outer hips. You're about halfway through the hold. Just keep observing the nature of your thoughts. It's so rare in modern society, at least in a Western society, that we slow down. The pace of everything is very quick, very mind-centric. We live in our heads a lot. So sometimes it can take the mind a little longer to catch up to the body when we practice in this way. Without judgment, just observing the thoughts. Maybe even frustration. It's very normal for that to bubble up and impatience with the pose. And as best you can, see if you can be still anyway and get curious about what's on the other side of that resistance. Yin asks us to surrender. About 30 more seconds in this shape. Slowly and gently, draw yourself up to seated. And I'll set your equipment off to the side. And meet me in Sukhasana, easy seat. And if you're newer to yin, it's, it's normal for your joints to feel a little fragile at first as you come out of these shapes, but usually dissipates with some, some movement and just a little bit of time. So in Sukhasana, let's bring the arms out wide, big inhale. Exhale, eagle arms, tuck your right arm underneath the left. And then start to draw the elbows away from your body. Inhale, lift the elbows. Exhale, lower them down. Two more times, inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Open the arms like wings. Inhale. Exhale, opposite arm underneath. Inhale, lift elbows. Exhale, lower. Two more. Stretching that space behind the heart. Lengthening the connective tissue of the shoulders and upper back. And then open the arms. Let's take a side bend up and over to one side, doesn't matter which. And feel your seat is heavy here and your fingers are light. Breathing into the side of your waist, relaxing head and neck. Take this and do a seated twist. So bring your raised arm down to the knee that's closest to you. Bring the spine tall and take a gentle twist. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. 
exhale. Gently unwind to center. Side bend to the other side. So we never want to be, you know, too much of one thing. Too yang, too yin. The wisdom of yin yoga is that contentedness lies in that in-between space where you're integrating the light and the dark. Let's take this into the twist. Spine tall. Two breaths there. Inhale. Exhale one. Inhale. Exhale two. And unwind. Very nice. All right. So now we'll come into square pose. This one can be a bit of a deeper hip stretch. I'm gonna give you many options. So again, if you're liking sitting on the edge of that blanket, that could keep happening here. So in square pose, traditionally, it is shin stacked, knee over ankle, okay? But that might not work in everyone's body, so we bring in our props. Maybe we need some support here so that we feel we can hold this shape for four minutes aside. Or if this is really not feeling good on the knees, maybe you're just in Sukhasana, okay? Cross-legged seat. So let's begin with the right leg on top. I'll mirror you. And then you'll hinge forward and come into a fold, okay? So come into a fold. Take what you need to support yourself here. Maybe it's just looking like this. Maybe you are able to come down and bring your forehead to the block. So make any adjustments you need to settle in. We're here for four minutes in square pose. So square pose is a deep stretch for the outer hip. Your leg is externally rotated, so you're getting really deep into the center of the joint. So feel what you feel. This one may be more intense than some of the other postures that we explored before it. So scan your body. Notice where you feel this the most. And also notice anywhere that might be gripping in reaction to the intensity of the shape. Some common culprits are the jaw, the forehead. See if you can relax the muscles of the face. Let the jaw unclench. Let the shoulders be soft. Calm and steady breaths. So according to yin philosophy, this Eastern philosophy, the right side of the body is associated with the archetype of the masculine so that which is more bright, obvious, warm, the sun, you know, qualities of action, more fire, things like that. So in this yin philosophy, it's the right side of the body that embodies many of these qualities. And in yin, we're seeking to balance yin and yang. So we recognize the the strengths and maybe the challenges of that mode, that yang mode. And try to bring a little bit more of the wisdom of yin to balance it out. We've got one more minute here. Maybe you bring the mantra in or you just sit and breathe, stay with yourself.
really nice yogis. That's four minutes. We'll slowly exit our square pose and come into windshield wipers as a counter pose. So feet to the mat. Gently knees, windshield wiper side to side. Getting the blood flowing back to the joints. Mm. I always feel that one. <laughs> it's that deep tissue work, my friends. All right. Square pose, second side. So now left leg is on top. Build your structure, square pose, also called fire log pose. Maybe now you can see why <laughs> there's some fire element to this. So just see what you're working with here. It might look very different than the other side, right? Maybe you needed support on one side, you don't on the other, but take what you need. And then you'll settle in. We've got four minutes on the clock here. So especially with large joint structures like the hips, there's very often asymmetry. So not asking the two sides of us to be the same, just noticing and working with what's there. So now we're on our left side, our yin side, associated with the archetypes of feminine, the moon, that which is cooler, more mysterious, passive, surrendering, receiving. You know, and these are just archetypes. They're just, you know, themes we can all relate to and, and see, you know, how it could benefit for us to draw on each of these to find balance. Sattva, the yogis call it, the state of harmony and integration of self. Halfway through this holds. So even though it's the same shape, it's a new side. Keep tracking anywhere you're gripping or holding and try to bring in some of that wisdom of your yin side. The softness, the surrender, the allowing gravity to do the work. One more minute on this side, yogis, doing great. If you need it, mantra is always there for you. Inhale, let. Exhale, go. Inhale, let. Exhale, go. And that's our four minute hold. With gentleness and respect for the body, we come up. Windshield wipers to let that go. Whoo! <laughs> 
where a pose, at least for me, is always one of the deep ones. But this winter time, it asks us to, to go deep. The season invites it. All right, let's get down onto our backs. Supported bridge is where we're headed. So you'll take your block with you, come onto your back, bend your knees, feet flat on the floor, and then you'll lift your hips and place your block under your sacrum. So that's the flat bone at the base of your spine. You could, of course, always do this with your bolster as well if you want a bit of a softer situation here. And you'll know that that block is in the right place when you feel you can start to relax, right? It kind of clicks in. Five minutes here, supported bridge. So this shape will be a little different than the others and that I'll offer you several variations here. So you might choose to stay right here in the same shape for the full five minutes or explore some variations. Start by just scanning the body, noticing where you're supported those points of contact, your feet on the floor, sacrum bolstered by your prop. So at the base of your spine, at the sacrum, it's the densest area of connective tissue in the body. So this is very therapeutic stimulating, supportive shape. Great way to make space in your lower back. And it's an inversion, right? Our hips are elevated above the heart. Blood flow being directed back to the heart and the lungs. So option to stay right here or extend one leg straight with your heel on the ground and keep your toes facing skyward rather than turning out. And this will start to lengthen your hip flexor. Now you might just choose to work with the legs extended one at a time, or you could see how it feels to lengthen both legs out. If that's too much for your lower back, you can always just take this one leg at a time. It might feel nice here to reach the arms overhead. Full body stretch and opening. Just feeling your breath flow from your toes to your fingertips. So our, our culture in the West, it's very yang. It's all about doing, 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 getting the thing, doing the thing. And yin can help us tap into that beautiful, quieter energy of just allowing, right? You show up in one of these shapes, you breathe, and then you create space in a passive way, a gentle way. Option to stay right here, folks, or final variation, Viparita Karani, elevating the legs. So for that, you'd bend one knee and then the other, and then just extend the legs straight up to the last minute in the pose. So elevating the legs just takes this inversion a step deeper, refreshing the legs. This also supports your lymphatic system, the drainage system of your body. Really good for 
immunity as we head into the winter colder months. We want to boost our immune system, stay healthy. Really nice. We're going to slowly exit this together. Lowering the legs if they're elevated. And then lifting your hips, sliding that block out, and letting your pelvis come back to the ground. Just taking a moment there, letting the low back settle. Counter pose will be a simple supine twist. Last shape before our final resting pose. So just let the knees drop off to one side, open the arms to a T. If that's too much with the knees together, you could extend the bottom leg straight. And just deepen your breath, letting the breath massage your internal organs, your spine. The twist is such a great way to refresh your spine and sort of come back to neutral after your practice. Let's just let the knees fall over to the other side now. Gently come onto your back. And our final pose for today is called pentacle. So you'll extend the arms and the legs long, arms overhead, kind of like a star shape. And if there's anything you need to make this final pose really comfortable, really supported for you, maybe a pillow under your head or a blanket for warmth, just take that time to settle in to your final resting posture. And once you're settled there, take a deep inhale. Smooth exhale. Again, deep inhale from toes to fingertips. Smooth exhale. Just watching your breath flow through your body like water. Taking all these shapes to relieve tension, remove blockages in your system so that your chi, your life force can flow through your body with more ease. You still find your mind is a bit active. Perhaps you call in that mantra. Let it assist you. Inhale, let. Exhale, go. Letting this final shape be 
a dormant state, almost like a creature hibernating. You let go of any extraneous movement, any activity, so you can allow this deep internal process to take effect. Allowing your body to absorb all the benefits of your practice and recharge and revitalize your nervous system. If you have the time, I encourage you to take it, stay here, linger here as long as you have. Otherwise, let your next breath come in more deeply. And slowly bring some mindful movement to fingers, to toes. Letting that bloom into a full body stretch from head to toe. And a slow pulling, a gathering of the knees in to the chest. And then roll to one side, a fetal position. Slowly make your way back to seated. Keeping eyes closed or gaze soft. Just sitting in stillness, allowing yourself a moment to transition into the rest of your day or evening. Thank you so much for sharing your time and your energy with me today. I hope this practice helped recharge your batteries and reconnect with yourself. If you enjoyed the class, please hit subscribe so you can see what else we're cooking up here on the channel. Take good care and I'll see you soon. Thank you.